Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool cutting board. This cutting board combines a custom laser cut map along with cutting out a cutting board on the router. Uh, so stay tuned and I'll show you how to import a map, make the laser tool paths, and cut out this cutting board. To start, I'm going to fire up a spire. The procedures we're going to see here are the same in something like vCarve as well. I'll set up my material blank, and I'm also going to set this to zero to the material surface. I'll press OK, and now I've got some material to work with. Next, I'm going to start drawing out the rectangle that is going to make up our cutting board. I'm not going to go into great detail on this because there's a lot of tutorials around to show you how to do this, but essentially what I'm going to do is make a rectangle for the uh, outer profile of the cutting board, and then I want a little drain channel in it as well, so I'm going to make a pocket tool path uh, just made out of two rectangular vectors that I will uh, offset to create that. And that's really it. Um, that's all it's going to take to cut out our cutting board. Now next we want to get a map to work with, and what we want is an image of a map that has really high contrast colors, uh, no text in it, because we're going to use the image trace feature in vCarve and Aspire to actually trace out our vectors that we can laser with. To get one of these maps, I like to use a service called Snazzy Maps. You can go here and you can pick out the style that you want. The style doesn't totally matter, but like I said, you want one that doesn't have any text labels and has a lot of contrast between the different parts and elements that you want on a map. In this case, I want bodies of water, land, major roads, and minor roads, and this map is going to work just fine. So once you find the style that's going to work for you, you can put in your address and you can find the area that you want. Uh, you can either download the image or in my case here, I just took a screenshot of it uh, and was able to copy that screenshot and then paste it into vCarve or Aspire really easily. So back here in Aspire, you can go to edit and paste and you can paste that image in. And what I'm going to do here is kind of move the image around because I want it uh, a little bit bigger than the area, the center area of my cutting board. And we're going to trim back these vectors a little bit here. But just for starters, I'll kind of rough it in um, and make sure that uh, it is a little bit larger than that center area here. And once I have the image in a place that I'm happy with, I can select it and click on the little bird icon in the left side panel here. And this is a tool that lets you trace an image in two vectors. It's great for logos and things like that. In this case, we're going to use it to make a map. Uh, so I'm going to click on color here because this is a color image that we're working with. And you'll see that it splits the image up into all of these different colors that you can select. One of the things I always like to do is to turn the bitmap fading down to none. That way you get a clear view of your map and all of the different colors that are on it. Once you do that, you can go up to this area where it's separated all the colors out and you can start selecting them. And you'll see when you select them, it will highlight them in red. And you can zoom in a little closer to make sure it got all the detail that you want. And sometimes, like in the case of this road, uh, you'll see here that it was kind of two shades of blue. So you can either go in here and try to find the other shade to get a better uh, selection of your road, or um, your tooltip actually turns into a little crosshair and you can go click on a color that's missing. And when you do that, it's gonna add it to your selection. So you see after I did that, that little skin, skinny road there uh, comes out a lot clearer. So once you're happy with the selection, what you can do is select preview on the bottom and then press apply. Uh, it's a little bit subtle, but you can see after you do that, it's gonna trace all of these rivers and bodies of water uh, with a vector. Uh, so before I go any further, I always like to close it here and I actually wanna put all of these vectors on a layer so I can keep them organized later on. Luckily, they're all in a group, so you can just right click them, click move to layer. I'm gonna click new layer and just call this one bodies of water. And you can even change the color to a color that you'll remember. In this case, I'm going to make mine blue. Uh, and there we go. So we've got all these vectors on a group, on a layer, so they're easy to manage later on. Now I'm going to go back with that vector selected, press that bird icon again, and I'm going to get more elements out of this map that I want on different layers. 
Again, I'm going to run that slider for bitmap fading all the way down so I can see a clear image of my bitmap. Uh, and this time I'm going to go for some of the uh, other roads in here. So instead of picking the colors here, I'm just going to go ahead and use the crosshair and click right on this road and let's see what happens. Um, that's great. It got a really good selection. I think this is exactly what I want. So I'll hit preview and apply and go ahead and close. And once I'm out of the image trace, I can just select those roads. I can right click them, say move to layer, name that layer highways. I'll give it a color just so it is recognizable to me and I'll press OK. I'll do this one last time for all of the uh, local roads. I'm just going to speed this up here so you can see it happen. Uh, and then the next step is we're going to go and clean up all of these vectors and get them ready for burning and cutting. Now in vCarve and Inspire, on the left side of the screen, you have these different tabs, two of which are Drawing and Layers. If I switch over to the Layers tab, you can see we now have a layer for all of the different elements that we're going to cut and burn. Uh, and we have a bitmap layer, which I've turned off, because now we're going to turn our attention to cleaning up the vectors that we've created. So what I'm going to do here is turn off all the layers except for the actual cutting board cut out in the drain area and one subset of the uh, roads that we're going to work on. And you can see here they extend past the drain board and really all the way to the edge of the cutting board. And I want to clean these up. Uh, I don't want them to do that. Since these vectors are in a group, the first thing I'm going to do is right click them, click ungroup objects and ungroup back onto object layer. That way it'll keep them on the same layer, but it's going to ungroup them so that we can work with them. I'll click back over to the drawing tab and find the scissor tool. And what the scissor tool lets you do is snip all of these vectors uh, and you can snip them to the edge of our little drain channel that we're going to have around here because we don't want the laser to burn past this drain channel. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and go around and snip all these vectors off just like that. Uh, it's pretty easy to do when you've got clean vectors that are created like this. Here I'm just doing a little bit of general cleanup. There's some really tiny vectors in here that I don't think make sense to laser burn. Um, they probably can't even see them on camera very well. Uh, but I'm just go going ahead and cleaning those up. And the last thing I want to do is grab these vectors here that are sort of on the very edge of the cutting board and just select them uh, and delete them. Now we've got one last problem to deal with. I'm going to turn off the layer that is our cutting board uh, vectors. And if you look at the edge of these lines that we trimmed, you can see that they are open on the ends. We need to close them up because we're going to essentially make pocket tool paths out of these. And uh, if you know from using vCarve and Aspire, you can't make a pocket out of a vector that has an opening on the end. To close up these vectors, I'll just use the line tool and make sure that I'm on the correct layer and just very carefully go to the end of each of these and just close them up with the line. So I'm just using the line tool, clicking on one side of the vector, clicking on the second, and then pressing spacebar uh, to end the line. Uh, so in this case, we've got about four of them that we need to clean up. And here's the last one here. Now, even though all of these uh, vectors are now closed, we need to, uh, in effect, weld the vectors together. Uh, and to do that, what I'm going to do is go up to the Edit window. Then I'm going to press Selection, and then I'm going to press Select All Vectors. You could also use the Control-A shortcut for this as well. With those vectors selected, I'll go to the Join tool. And you'll see here that it's reporting that some of these vectors that I have selected are open. But after I press join, I'm going to have zero open ones, which is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and press join. So now these vectors are all prepped and ready for tool pathing. But now we've got to go clean up the rest of the vectors that we have. This next section I'm just going to speed up uh, because essentially what I'm doing here is taking all of the different layers. So the bodies of water, the highways, uh, all of those and doing the same exact thing that we just did going through and trimming all the vectors so they fit on the inside of our cutting board, making sure they're all closed loops, and just generally going and cleaning them up to make sure there's no uh, little tiny bits of vectors that got rendered that I may not want to laser burn. Uh, but again, the procedure is exactly the same as we saw with this first set of vectors, so if you need a review, just go back and watch that section of the video. So now we've got all of our vectors uh, closed and put on different layers so they're easy to navigate. Now we can get into making some tool paths. 
One of my favorite toolpaths is the Quick Engrave toolpath, which you can see right here with this letter T. We're going to click this and hit select for our tool and get our previously set up 15 watt laser. I'm going to set the laser power and just check my feeds and speeds. Everything looks good, so I will click select. Now we have to pick the vectors that we want to burn, and you could pick them individually by holding down the shift key, but there's actually a lot easier way. You can hit vector selector, and then you can go in and select all closed vectors on a particular layer, like I'm doing here. And what this will do is automatically select all of those closed vectors on an assigned layer for you, instead of forcing you to click them all. It's a great tip, and I use it all the time for stuff like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate just to see what this toolpath is going to look like. And we'll let it process for a moment. And it looks pretty good, but I think I'd like to make it look a little bit different. So I'm going to change this from an offset toolpath uh, to a hatch toolpath. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that is going to look a lot better. So we'll leave that for our bodies of water. Lastly, I'm just going to give this one a name and hit calculate again so the name sticks in there and go ahead and I'll click close and we can go to making our next toolpath. Next I'm going to move on to making a path for the road. I'll do the same quick engrave and I'm going to do the same trick where I click on vector selection and I'll just change the selection to major roads. You can see it selects them all automatically which is great and I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate and I'm just going to zoom in on this section road here. And this isn't really what I want it to look like. I'd rather do an offset. I don't really like the spacing here, so I'm going to change the offset to a smaller number. That's going to look great. That's going to burn those major roads nice and dark uh, so they really stand out. So that looks perfect. Now I'm going to work on the local roads. I'll do a quick engrave tool path. But this time, I'm going to edit the laser tool and drop the laser power down to about 40%. Because I want these roads to render, but I want them to be a little bit lighter. Uh, so I'm just going to change the name of this toolpath to Local Roads, do our vector selection trick, and select the layer for Local Roads. And again, you'll see they all get selected, which is great in this case because there's a lot of them. I'll click Calculate. And this is going to take a minute because there's a lot of detail here, but uh, after not too long, it is going to make that really nice laser tool path for all of these local roads. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up a pocket tool path to carve out this channel here. Um, I used a V-bit on this um, just because I wanted a V-shaped pocket in here. Um, this is a pretty standard tool path. I'm just going to go into my tool library, select a V-bit as you normally would, and then create a pocket tool path of a depth that will just allow the V-bit uh, to go in there and um, you know, make a nice little valley on both sides. Uh, we've got lots of videos on how to make tool paths like this. Again, this is a pretty simple uh, pocket tool path, um, so really nothing special here. So set your feeds and speeds and your depths to your liking and whatever bits that uh, you have. So now that we have that pocket toolpath ready to go here, I'm going to move on to making my profile toolpath. There's nothing particularly special about this profile toolpath. It's a pretty standard one. We're just going to select the outside vector, set our cut depth, go ahead and select the end mill that we want to use. In this case, I'm just going to use a quarter inch bit. Feeds and speeds look good. And the only real special thing in here is that since we're cutting this out of a blank that's only a little bit bigger uh, than the cutting board itself, I'm just going to want to put some tabs in here to hold everything in place. So here I am now just uh, setting up the tabs on something like this. I'm going to do about a three-quarter inch uh, tab, about a quarter inch thick. We'll do the 3D ones. And I'm just going to place some tabs uh, around the side so when we're cutting this thing it doesn't uh, jump off on us. Now what we're going to do is take those three laser tool paths that we had combined and saved into one file and we're going to load them into Mach 4. And this is like loading any other routing file except the extra step that we have to do here uh, once we see the preview and we like it here in Mach is to click Process Vector Laser G-Code. And what this is going to do is take that kind of generic G-code that we created out of uh, VCarve or Aspire and add in all the necessary commands for lasering that the G-code needs. On a large file like this, you can see this process is going to take, um, you know, maybe about a minute and then it will be done and the file will be ready to run. 
Now we're going to head over to our machine and we're going to chuck up a bit. Uh, the bit doesn't matter. Um, we're just going to use this to zero in XY to the corner of our material using the touch plate. Uh, we've got some great videos on how to use this touch plate, but essentially this is going to establish the lower left hand corner of our material. Since we're running a laser tool path first, we're going to want to zero our laser to the top of our material. Now we can put on our safety glasses and watch the laser go. Uh, this toolpath in reality took about 12 minutes. I've obviously sped it up here so we don't have to sit here in silence for 12 minutes. Uh, but we're going to let this run and then when it's done we'll switch over to our routing toolpaths. So we'll start off with that V bit. We're just going to chuck that up and zero to the top of the material as you would normally do. Now we'll go ahead and run that V-bit around the edge of the cutting board to create that drain tray. And for the final toolpath, we'll go ahead and install our quarter inch uh, end mill here, zero it out to the top of the material, and cut out this cutting board. And just like that, we've got a really, really cool looking cutting board that can bind both routing and laser all on one workpiece. This combination of cutting tools is really exciting to us, and we've had a lot of fun making these tools and using them, and we're really excited to see what kind of projects you can do with them.